It was more than 14 years ago that 9-11 happened. Since then, citizens have done their own investigating of that crime. The results have been overwhelmingly conclusive that the American people have been lied to by their government. Rather than terrorists from Afghanistan or Iraq being the terrorists, it seems like other people from the Middle East were involved. Could you speak about the real perpetrators of 9-11? Well, there are certain things that we know that are simply indisputable with regard to 9-11. And some of the key things that I think it's imperative for people to know is, for one, Larry Silverstein, Frank Lowy. What they did when they purchased the lease on the Twin Towers is, is simply astounding, quite frankly. The Port Authority of New York had actually lost a lawsuit, a multi-year uh, lawsuit. They were trying to get out of the liability of removing the asbestos that was in the Twin Towers. And after years and years and years of litigation, in 2001, the Port Authority lost this uh, case and they were found liable for the removal of the asbestos that was estimated to cost in the billions. So when Larry Silverstein and Frank Lowy, two Jewish businessmen, purchased the lease on the Twin Towers, they purchased two buildings that were full of asbestos and were going to cost billions to have that asbestos removed. Now that makes me wonder, if it was Mohammed and Ahmed from uh, the Middle East and they were Muslim and they bought those buildings, then proceeded to double the insurance policy, and then lo and behold, six weeks later, after having security of those buildings, because of course, if you purchase the lease, then that means you are now in control of the security. So Frank Lowy and Larry Silverstein bought these worthless buildings that were half empty, full of asbestos that would have cost billions to remove. They bought these buildings, doubled the insurance policy. The buildings then turned to dust, and they ended up, ended up collecting billions. I don't think for one second that the American people would believe any Muslims if they purchased these buildings in the same kind of process. On July 24, 2001, Larry Silverstein celebrated the acquisition of the Twin Towers with a public ceremony. Silverstein signed the lease on the World Trade Center just six weeks before 9-11. He then took out an insurance policy covering the Twin Towers for $3.2 billion in case of total destruction. But we ran into a problem. We couldn't collect the insurance because the insurance companies didn't want to pay. There were 22 insurance companies defending 22 insurers who didn't want to pay their obligations under the policies. And so they took me to court. And I had to beat them in court, the lower court, and then had to take an appeal and win in the upper court. So they owed me four and a half billion. A new governor was just elected, Elliot Spitzer an old friend who I knew well. I said, Elliot, if you don't help me, I'll never collect from the insurance companies. And guess what? He listened and he said, you know what? You're entitled. I'm going to get you the money. And in six months, he got me the four and a half billion dollars. The insurance companies didn't like me, but at least I got the money. Aside from Frank Lowy and uh, Larry Silverstein, the only people that were arrested on 9-11 were in fact Israelis, Jewish Israelis who were caught uh, filming the event and it was a suspicious uh, behavior that caused one of the people in the area to call the police and say, I've got these people that are sitting here filming the event, 9-11 as it's happening, and they're high-fiving each other and dancing around and celebrating. You know, they, 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 were, they didn't look shocked to me. You know, they didn't look shocked. I thought it was very strange. The witness called police, who stopped the van hours later and arrested five men. All five, it turns out, were Israeli. They were turned over to the FBI. Sources tell ABC News, during a check of national security databases, some of the men were listed as having had connections with Israeli intelligence. At the FBI, that set off alarm bells. The FBI wasn't satisfied. Channel 4 has learned from intelligence sources that some of the men's names were already known to American counterintelligence. Paul Kurtzberg admitted serving in an Israeli army anti-terrorist unit. He refused to take a lie detector test for 10 weeks. I was uh, serving in a special unit in the army and it's not a big secret or something like that. But uh, there are things that I have to keep to, uh, to myself as uh, loyal to my country. The FBI needed the answers to three important questions. Who were these men? 
what brought them to that parking lot on the morning of September 11th? And did they have any advanced knowledge of what was going to happen that day? This has been acknowledged on Israeli television that these uh, Israeli agents had foreknowledge. They admitted on Israeli television that they were forewarned and were told to go and film the event. We were taken for another round of questioning, this time related to our allegedly being members of Mossad. The fact of the matter is we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. Our purpose was to document the event. Investigators suspect that the Israelis may have gathered intelligence about the attacks in advance and not shared it. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins. But when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 911 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Asked this week about another sprawling investigation and the detention of 60 Israelis since September 11th, the Bush administration treated the questions like hot potatoes. I would just refer you to the Department of Justice with it. I'm not familiar with the report. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained. With respect to why they are being retain detained and the other aspects of, of your question, whether it's because they are in intelligence services or what they were doing, I will uh, defer to the Department of Justice and the FBI to answer that. Beyond the 60 apprehended or detained and many deported since September 11th, Another group of 140 Israeli individuals have been arrested and detained in this year in what government documents describe as, quote, an organized intelligence gathering operation designed to, quote, penetrate government facilities. Most of those individuals said they had served in the Israeli military, which is compulsory there, but they also had, most of them, intelligence expertise and either worked for Amdocs or other companies in Israel that specialize in wiretapping. Earlier this week, the Israeli embassy here in Washington denied any spying against or in the United States. Carl, what about this question of advanced knowledge of what was going to happen on 9-11? How clear are investigators that some Israeli agents may have known something? Well, it's very explosive information, obviously, and there's a great deal of evidence that they say they have collected, none of it necessarily conclusive. It's more when they put it all together. A bigger question, they say, is how could they not have known? Almost a direct quote, Brett. So this is not disputable. They were amongst the other Israelis who were arrested on 9-11, some of whom were caught in vans with explosives in the vans. George Washington Bridge. Indeed, George Washington Bridge. And they're not the, there were more than one set of Israelis that were actually caught with explosives in their vehicles. And nationally, they're looking for a white Chevy van with New Jersey plates. And on the back bumper, it says something to the effect of urban moving system. We had received an all points bulletin and uh, I just happened to see the van and, you know, hollered over to my lieutenant, you know, I think that could be the van. We checked it out and it was, you know, we were all on edge, obviously, so I really wasn't looking to make friends with these people and neither were the officers that I were with. Once we started talking to them, you know, they were pretty much like, hey, you know, we're, you know, we're not against you, we're with you. They were indeed from the Middle East but more precisely from Israel. Two of them were formally identified as Mossad agents. The five officially worked for a moving company called Urban Moving Systems, whose owner, a certain Dominique Otto Suter, fled to Tel Aviv on September 14th and was never investigated. Not long after the arrest, the offices of Urban Moving were simply abandoned. Almost everything was left behind. Tuval Aviv is a counter-terrorism advisor to the U.S. Congress, but was once a spy for Israel's secret service Mossad. He says Urban Moving was a front company for Israeli intelligence, and that some of its workers were spying illegally in the U.S. Israel has engaged in intelligence gathering in friendly countries. Some of it is done with permission, and some of it probably has been done without permission in areas that is vital to Israeli interest. There was a bolo, which is a be on the lookout for a particular van with there's supposed to be a few occupants in there. And the bolo basically stated that this van may be on its way to destroy the George Washington Bridge or something like that, if I remember correctly, and blow up the bridge. The FBI has now put out a nationwide APB all points bulletin for a white Chevy van with New Jersey registration. Written on the back is Urban Moving Systems. Two or three men arrested on the New Jersey Parkway. Deborah, can you hear me now? 
Yes, I can. Uh, that is the information that I'm getting from two sources, that there was a van either on the New Jersey Turnpike or the Garden State Parkway, and that it was near the George Washington Bridge. There were two or three men who were in the van. The van was pulled over. Uh, it is not clear why the van was pulled over, but when it was, uh, law enforcers found uh, uh, tons of explosives inside of the van. But some very um, intelligent and aggressive cops also stopped another terrorist attack from happening on the George Washington Bridge. CBS2 has learned exclusively that two men are in custody tonight after being arrested at the George Washington Bridge with an entire truckload of explosives. Now I'm told that those explosives could have been enough to blow up the entire span and all the cars and the people that were on it. And word late tonight that two suspects are in FBI custody after a truckload of explosives was discovered around the George Washington Bridge. That bridge uh, links uh, New York to New Jersey over the Hudson River. Whether the discovery of those explosives had anything to do with other events today is unclear, but the FBI has two suspects in hand, said the truck uh, load of explosives, that enough explosives were in the truck to do great damage to the George Washington Bridge. I was watching the towers, and though I wasn't the closest, I saw them crumble to the earth like they were full of explosives. And they thought nobody noticed the news reports that they did about the bombs planted on the George Washington Bridge. Four non-Arabs arrested during the emergency, and then it disappeared from the news permanently. So the only people arrested on the day were actually Israelis. And funny enough, when they were arrested by the police, there was anonymous calls on the day where, very suspiciously, reports were being made of people who looked suspicious around the George Washington Tunnel, who looked like, and this is a quote, Palestinians. We have a white van. Two is three of uh, guys in there. They look like Palestinians. They going around the uh, building. There's a mini van heading towards the Howard Tunnel. I see the guy by North Airport mixing some drugs, and he has those street uniforms. He has what? So what does a Palestinian look like? And now, if you're an Israeli Mossad agent and you're using the motto of thou shalt, in, uh, you know, by way of deception, thou shalt do war, uh, this makes sense that you would be blaming somebody who's not guilty, Palestinians, for a crime that you yourself are committing. Israeli Mossad are known for false flags, and it's clear they had foreknowledge. They had explosives in their vehicles. They were arrested on the day. Many of them failed lie detector tests, and they were quietly deported by Michael Chertoff, who was in charge of their release. Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. Quietly deported back to Israel, and yet the whole time we've been told that Muslims are responsible for this. And then let's look at the Muslims and how ridiculous this story is. First off, you've got a guy in a cave in Afghanistan, Osama bin Laden, who according to French intelligence was seen in an American hospital in Dubai in July of 2001. So this CIA asset who's been working for Al-Qaeda, what is Al-Qaeda? It's nothing but a creation of the CIA functioning for the CIA. Al-Qaeda, to the best of my recollection, has up to now not attacked Israel. But it's attacked your number one ally and protector and sponsor in the United States of America. There is a quote-unquote war on terror being going on for 15 years. But uh, so we've never made the case or argued the case that somehow Osama bin Laden was directly involved in 9-11. That evidence uh, has never been forthcoming. If you visit the FBI.gov website, you'll find the 10 most wanted list. And on that list, of course, is Osama bin Laden. You can pull up his wanted poster, and on that poster is a list of charges that he's wanted for. The curious thing is that nowhere in the list of charges is any mention of September 11th. The Muckraker Report contacted Rex Toom, a spokesperson for the FBI, and asked why was there no mention of the attacks on September 11th on Osama's wanted poster. Mr. Toom's response was, we have no hard evidence linking Osama bin Laden with the attacks on September 11th. Now we have some breaking news coming into the MSNBC newsroom. A federal judge has approved a request by prosecutors to officially dismiss all criminal charges against Osama bin Laden. To officially dismiss all criminal charges against Osama bin Laden. 
So Osama bin Laden, a guy who is apparently living in a cave in Afghanistan where you don't even have mobile coverage, is apparently masterminding some sort of operation with 19 hijackers, which includes a hijacker like Mohammed Atta, who was boozing it up in strip joints in Florida, snorting cocaine and going out with a stripper, which doesn't sound to me like a guy who's actually going to go out on a jihad and, and kill himself uh, for the cause. These guys had money flowing out their ass. I mean, excuse my language, but they never seemed to run out of money. I mean, they was just just tossing money left and right. I mean, it was just like, oh my god. And they had they had mass supplies of cocaine. The entire video is silent, and yet the image is unnerving. The 9/11 mastermind and his accomplice laughing it up and then going through their lines for a performance of martyrdom wills. Jarrah frequently stumbles through his own martyrdom tape. Can't maintain a serious tone. His Al-Qaeda handlers coach him to be more dramatic. Start again, one of them scolds him off camera. This speech requires passion. Why don't you try a different approach, a second man chimes in. This is not reality jihadism. This is more, in fact, scripted, edited, stylized. Not only that, but none of these guys could fly these planes. It's, it's been well accepted and acknowledged at this point. They were flying little one-engine Cessnas and uh, Pipers. They're not qualified to fly these planes, especially with those types of maneuvers. And we can go on and on and on and on about this. But the bottom line is we see Israeli fingerprints all over this event, along with traitors in the U.S. government. And, and this is where the trail leads, very obviously, and that's in the public record. Never mind the destruction of evidence that occurred, there is no legitimate investigation. The 9-11 Commission report is a complete whitewash, it's a joke and an insult, and it doesn't even go into many of the issues that I'm mentioning here. So the real trail leads to Israel and traitors in the United States government, not to Arabs, not to Muslims. Those guys who were uh, blamed for it, these 19 hijackers, are nothing more than patsies, and it's beyond obvious. It is known that $100,000 passed through the account of Hanan Serfati, one of the arrested Israeli spies, who rented two Hollywood apartments on the same street as Mohammed Atta, one of the alleged hijackers of American Airlines Flight 11. It was also reported in the New York Times on February 19, 2009, that Ali al-Jarrah, a cousin of one of the alleged hijackers of United Airlines Flight 93, had been spying for Mossad on the Palestinian resistance and Hezbollah for 25 years. But of course, none of these leads were thoroughly investigated. The reason is that in 2001, the head of the Justice Department's criminal division was Michael Chertoff, the son of a rabbi and a Mossad agent. All Israeli spies arrested by the FBI, including the dancing Israelis, owe him their impunity and repatriation to Israel. Chertoff is a key man in the 9-11 operation. In 2005, he was appointed Secretary of Homeland Security in charge of the fight against terrorism on American soil, which allowed him to control dissident citizens and restrict access to evidence under the pretext of national security. Uh, what's your general viewpoint about people who think the federal government was involved in 9-11? I think that that's uh, in the same category as Holocaust denial and those people who still aren't convinced that President Obama was born in Hawaii. It's kind of a, a, a kind of a, a out there conspiracy theory which does not warrant a lot of attention. So this is where the trail really needs to go and let us not let us not forget destruction of evidence in a crime scene is in, in itself a major, major crime. And for that, we can start arresting people right now. Critical evidence. In any crime scene, the first thing you do is seal off the crime scene. You start to investigate forensically. None of that was done. Those who were in charge of that crime scene need to be arrested right now for destruction of evidence. That's not disputable. Now, we can get into exactly who did it and how it was done and whatnot, which is a little bit more difficult. But if we had a legitimate investigation from the get-go, we would have had the evidence by now to be able to not only indict, but prosecute and convict these bastards who are responsible for this. Okay, Ken, I want to ask you this question. So why did they do 9-11? Well, it's very, very, very well laid out. In the Project for a New American Century, we find that these so-called neocons, which I find is really synonymous with Jewish Americans, Israeli Americans. We went to war against a guy who had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. It was a total pretext. 
it's it's inexplicable. And there you go to Cheney, there you go yeah. to Bush, there you go to the Jewish neocons who wanted to remake uh, the world. Maybe I can say that because I'm Jewish and uh, to bring about a I, certain I'm result not really in the Middle sure East. That you can. Okay. I'm not really <laughs> sure. That, I'm not really sure that you <laughs> go, can. Go, go ahead. The agenda of Israel is laid out very clearly in the project for a new American century, rebuilding America's defenses, clean break. You read uh, these documents and it laid out very clearly an agenda for the United States to achieve this goal of full spectrum dominance. And the full spectrum dominance agenda simply means that America found itself in a position where it should take advantage, according to these nutcases, that America should take advantage of the fall of the Soviet Union, should establish itself as the preeminent power on the planet, and have absolute control over air, land, sea, and space, and cyberspace. And the way to achieve this goal was to be able to secure some of the major energy reserves in key strategic areas around the world, including Afghanistan, the Caspian Basin, and whatnot. So these so-called neocons identified uh, the former Soviet republics in the Caspian region with the stupendous amount of gas and oil reserves as key to uh, controlling the world. So in order to secure that, a pipeline would need to be secured through Afghanistan to get all this stuff to market. And also it was identified that there must be permanent military bases in the Middle East, of course, strategically, the oil there and other uh, important aspects of, of keeping control of the world were identified. So the, we did have a base in Saudi Arabia at that time, which was a leftover of the first Gulf War, but that was becoming increasingly problematic. So Iraq was identified as a place not only to break up, but also to have permanent military bases. Now, the thing is that it's in this document, they said the American people, effectively what they said was the American people are too stupid to realize what an opportunity we have. And the only way that they would support these effectively wars of aggression, which are war crimes, quite frankly, the only way they would support such a thing is if there was a catalyst, some sort of, quote, new Pearl Harbor type event. Uh, I think that uh, I think that today um, was another expression of the strength of this country and the strength of democracy. Um, Nations, democracies, don't go to war easily. And they usually debate and argue uh, before they do. Sometimes they have to be bombed into going to war. Uh, in fact, that's what happened in World War II. All of Europe had been conquered. You had to, uh, America was actually bombed in Pearl Harbor. Uh, uh, and, was, and that was a pivotal event that opened the eyes of Americans. And once their eyes were opened, they gathered the the power that is available in this great free nation, and uh, the result was preordained. Uh, I think in a, in a similar way, the bombing of September 11th opened the eyes of uh, Americans to see the great conflict and the great danger that faces us. And once opened, then the, the overpowering uh, uh, will of the majority of the people of the United States, of the, the steamroller, is uh, inexorably moving to, to decide this battle. Lo and behold, only just a few years after these documents were written, 9-11 comes. It was the biggest gift to the uh, Jewish supremacist Zionists who wanted to break up Iraq. That was always identified, breaking up Iraq into several pieces and also surrounding areas. The Israeli newspaper Ma'ariv has reported Israel's former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has publicly said the September 11th attacks have been good for Israel. Netanyahu said, quote, we're benefiting from one thing, and that is the attack on the Twin Towers and Pentagon and the American struggle in Iraq. The real reason for all of these policies we see is for something called the Greater Israel Project. And every policy we see playing out in the Middle East right now is all about basically getting the Arabs and Muslims to bleed each other, to sow the seeds of sectarian hatred, to get the Arabs and Muslims to kill each other, to hate each other, to be divided into that fractured, weakened state. You will always be divided. And as long as you're divided, you'll be weak. And as long as you are weak, they'll steal your wealth. It's not rocket science. You don't have to be Einstein to work it out. Unity is strength. If you could only stop thinking like Sunni and Shia, like Lebanese and Syrian, like left and right, like Maghrebi or Levantine, if you could, or, or Gulfi, if you could only stop thinking like that, imagine the strength that you could have if you came together. But as long as you're ready to sit and blame other people, you will never be 
united and as long as you are not united you will be divided and as long as you are divided they will steal your things that's why they're doing it they just care about dividing you they just care about making you fight against each other as long as you're fighting each other you're not fighting them you're not fighting Israel you're allowing them to steal your oil steal your gas steal your water for eventually for Israel to expand and become the next empire after America because the American Empire is being sacrificed right before our eyes on our independence line John good morning for Michael Schweiger uh, good morning uh, I for one am sick and tired of all these uh, Jews coming on C-SPAN and other stations and pushing us to go to war against our Muslim friends they're, they're willing to spend the last drop of American blood and treasure to get their way in the world. They have way too much power in this country. People like Wolfowitz and Fife and the other neocons that Jewed us into Iraq, and now we're going to spend the next 60 years rehabilitating our soldiers. I'm sick and tired of it. John in uh, Franklin, New York. Any comments? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, of course, American foreign policy is eventually up to the American people. Uh, the w one of the big things that we've not been able to discuss in this country for the last 30 years is our policy toward the Israelis. Uh, whether we want to be involved in fighting Israel's wars uh, in the future is something that Americans should be able to talk about. They may vote yes. They may want to see their kids killed in Iraq or Yemen or somewhere else to protect Israel. Uh, but the question is we need to talk about it. Ultimately, Israel as a country is of no particular worth to the United States. It doesn't you mean strategic strategically. We have no, they have no resources we need. Their manpower is minimal. Um, their association with us is um, a negative for the United States. Now, that's, that's a fact. Uh, General uh, Wesley Clark said that we're going to go and take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, and finishing off with Iran. But after 9-11, about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me, and one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to... Come in, you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. He picked up a piece of paper and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I believe that this is the time to deploy a globally concerted effort led by the United States, the UK, Europe and Russia against all sources of terror. Since then, Ukraine and Russia has been added to their list. Please talk to us about how close we are to World War III. Well, there are many people who would argue that we're already in World War III. It's just not full scale yet, and you can make a strong case for that. We haven't reached full scale World War III, but if, if the powers that be had their way, we would have already gone into Syria full scale. Somehow, some way, whether it's divine intervention or whatever, that has not happened as of yet. Syria was always a stepping stone to Iran, and it's hard to imagine that China and Russia could sit by and allow Iran to fall by the wayside like Iraq and Libya and others. So. We've been very, very close, and I think people seriously indict our, we indict ourselves collectively for collective insanity. I mean, we, are, we have been flirting with a third world war, a full-scale nuclear launch. We have come this close on many different occasions, not just the Cuban Missile Crisis. And for me, that's what it really boils down to. This is, in a word, unacceptable. Unacceptable. You and I, our children, future generations are all threatened by a bunch of psychopaths who quite frankly at this point need a full-scale third world war and if you look at the policies I don't know how anybody in their right mind could conclude anything other than these bastard prostitutes who are running our governments are following orders to carry us straight into a third world war especially when you look at Russia I mean the things that we're saying uh, about Ukraine are beyond absurd 
If we had an equivalent situation, and let's say that Russia was investing billions of dollars into Mexico to stir the shit, basically, and cause disruption in there, and then they had the kind of cross-border issues that have been going on in Ukraine, imagine how long it would have taken for the United States to start bombing Mexico. It wouldn't have been more than five minutes and we would have been bombing. You look at Russia, they've been extremely reserved. Keep it in mind that Ukraine is part of Russia, historically. So really what we see right now at this point in history is, is, is sort of two major opposing forces. Those uh, of the powers that be, those who have been running the show, not just for uh, decades, not even for centuries, but really when we get back to the history of the world, we find that psychopaths have been in charge for literally millennia. And these psychopaths are competing with humanity. And what we have in this world right now is a rising of the consciousness of humanity in an unparalleled way. There is no example of this kind of consciousness rising. So what we have is this rising consciousness versus this incredible psychopathic behavior of the leaders. And ultimately, it's one of these two forces that's going to win out. And if the psychopaths win, you can rest assured they've got some underground compounds that are the size of cities. And I don't know about you, but I don't have my invitation yet. They have their invitations and they're going to go underground and they're that fucking crazy, excuse my language, that they're willing to set off a third world war and nuclear weapons so that we can all fuck, suck on it, basically, if we survive the radiation and whatnot, but they'll be underground. And this is, you know, this is simply not disputable. So that's just how dangerous the situation is. And let's make no mistake about it. Those people who are in charge, if they're even people, those people, those individuals are serious about setting off a third world war. All of the policies, when we look at it, only conclude one thing, that is they want a third world war. And to be honest with you, I believe actually they're correct. That's about the only thing that could save them at this point. Because as humanity's consciousness is rising, eventually we're going to actually see, we're going to lift the veil and see exactly what is happening. In fact, more and more people are. Once you recapture the ability to think for yourself, all of this becomes really quite clear. You don't need to be a genius. I am not the smartest guy in the room. The stuff that I'm telling you right now is completely a matter of the public record. Anybody who wants to seek it can go find it. Everything I'm saying can be verified 100%. And we really do need to make a choice at this point in history. Are we going to carry on allowing these bastards to run the world and bring us to the brink and possibly a third world war? Or are we going to exercise our power and our consciousness and take a different path? I have had long conversations with contacts at the Army War College at the headquarters Marine Corps. And I've made it absolutely clear that it is 100% certain that 9-11 was a Mossad operation. Period. What we need to stand up and say is not only did they attack the USS Liberty, they did 9-11. They didn't. I have had long conversations over the past two weeks with contacts at the Army War College at the headquarters Marine Corps, and I've made it absolutely clear in both cases that it is 100% certain that 9-11 was a Mossad operation, period. First, the disbelief, and what I show them immediately afterwards is an interview with a demolitions expert named Danny Jowenko, and it shows the third building at the World Trade Center going down. And they look at that, and I said, now you understand that if one of the buildings was wired for demolition, all of them were wired for right. demolition. And that's it. That's the tipping point. Getting into arguments about who was flying what and where they were and whether there was nanothermite. Those things are true, but they're incidental. The thing that's necessary is to tell people three buildings went down, the third was not hit by a plane, it was wired for controlled demolition, therefore all of them were wired for controlled demolition. And at that point, the reaction is rage. First disbelief and then rage. 9-11 has led directly to 60,000 Americans dead and wounded. God knows how many hundreds of thousands of people in other countries that we've killed or wounded or made homeless. This is an open wound. And what Americans need to understand is they did it. They did it. And if they do understand that, Israel's going to disappear. Israel will flat ass disappear from this earth. I sent a film to one of my colleagues and it basically had Americans grieving over their dead, coming back. And I showed one of them, it was a woman, just wrenched by grief, you know, over, over her dead soldier. And I said, you know, if Americans ever know, ever know that Israel did this, they're going to scream.
scrub them off the earth, and they're not going to give a rat's ass what the cost is. They are not going to care. The first thing marked is astonishment. They didn't know. They, they truly didn't know. And these are not unintelligent people. They really didn't know. And the next statement is rage. Real rage. The Zionists are playing this as a truly an all-or-nothing exercise. Because if they lose this one, if the American people ever realize what happened, they're done. The military has not been bought. The military is loyal, but it has not been bought. And if it ever understands this, really, really deeply understands this, and this is what I got when I put some of these things to the Army War College and to Headquarters Marine Corps, I mentioned to a contact at Headquarters Marine Corps, I said, you know they did 9-11. And it was, you don't mean it. I said, absolutely. And if they ever understand that, these people are history.